So who were the main Jewish thinkers that would go on to influence Jewish thought through the ages? While there are many philosophers who wrote during the medieval period, in an introductory course we can only address a limited number, but all of those that we'll discuss stand out as having had some sort of lasting influence. Now, most accounts of medieval Jewish philosophy begin with Sadia Gaon, who lived from 882 to 942, um, also known as Sadia ben Joseph al-Fayumi, so-called since he was born in Fayum in Egypt. Now, Sadia became the head of the great Talmudic Academy, the Academy of Sura, um, hence the title Gaon, which was bestowed on the heads of the two great Babylonian Talmudic Academies of, on the one hand, Sura, and on the other hand, Humbadita, uh, both located in what today is Baghdad in Iraq. Now, Sadia wrote works on all manner of subjects, including Hebrew grammar, mathematics, Jewish law, halacha, um, but for our purposes, it was the book that has become known as Sefer Emunot Fideot, which translates as the book of beliefs and opinions that's most significant. It's the first work that gives a full and systematic account of Jewish philosophy. Um, originally it was written in Arabic, and therefore its actual title is Kitab al-Amanat wal-Itikadat. Um, and it's a work usually categorized as falling under the school of thought known as Kalam. Now, Kalam, the word itself meaning speech, was a name given to an Islamic school of theology that arose in the 8th century as an attempt to present a rational or philosophical understanding of Islam. And Kalam, which kind of is analogous to philosophy, was practiced by Muta Kalimun, which would be the Kalam equivalent of philosophers. Um, its critics at the time saw it as not being genuinely philosophical. It was seen as being apologetic, basically trying to use philosophical methods to prove things that they already believed. Um, this was contrasted with Islamic thinkers who saw themselves as uh, falasifa, or genuine philosophers engaged in an open search for truth, or engaged in falasafa, philosophy. Um, so Sadio, as a Kalamic type thinker, would usually begin with what the Torah says and then go on to show how what the Torah said could be proven using rational methods. And he would often exhaustively list arguments and counter-arguments for the views he was discussing. Um, he followed the more rational school of Kalam. There were two main schools in Kalam, that of the Ashariah or the Asharites and the Mutazila or the Mutazilites. Um, the former were rather less impressed with pure reason than the latter. So, for example, while the Mutazilites believed that God's laws could be understood as making sense according to human reason, the Asherites thought that God's laws depended purely on God's will. God just demands that we do things because he wants us to. And those demands need not make any sense to human reason. Now, Sajra is more like the Mutazilites in seeing human reason as highly significant. But he also has to address a very important question. Because if human reason can work everything out, what's the point of revelation? Why does God need to reveal things if we can work them out for ourselves? The first thing we're going to do this week is look at Sadia's answer to this question. <laughs> 